In a corner of South America, there's a small nation cloaked in one of the planet's most untouched rainforests that's about to undergo a massive transformation. This is Guyana, a country of less than a million people, which was suddenly thrust onto the world stage by the discovery of colossal offshore oil reserves. With billions of dollars now flooding its treasury, Guyana is dreaming of a new destiny. One filled with gleaming cities, booming industries, and a level of prosperity its people have never seen before. But every modern dream, every skyscraper, and every factory runs on one thing, energy. And for Guyana, that's its Achilles heel. While oil money pours in, its people and businesses are stuck with some of the most expensive and unreliable electricity in the entire region. It's a staggering paradox that's strangling the country's potential right out of the gate. To solve this, Guyana is looking deep into its jungle, betting its future on a single, titanic project. It's a plan that promises to deliver what oil and gas can't. Clean, cheap, and limitless power. This is the story of a long-held ambition to tame one of the Amazon's mighty rivers and kickstart a new era of green energy. Deep in the Amazon, the small nation of Guyana is making a billion-dollar bet to become a renewable energy giant. Its weapon of choice? A massive hydropower dam on the Curibrong River that promises to slash electricity costs and fuel a new age of prosperity. But this green dream is threatening to become a national nightmare. The project, known as the Amela Falls Hydropower Project, has turned into a political battlefield, a potential financial black hole, and a lightning rod for environmental fears. Fierce opposition, huge financial risks, and the sheer power of the jungle itself are all threatening to shatter Guyana's ambitions before a single megawatt is ever generated. This is the story of Guyana's controversial hydropower plan, and why it could either save the nation or ruin it. So why is Guyana willing to gamble so much on one project? To get that, you first have to understand the harsh reality of its energy crisis. For decades, the country has been almost completely dependent on imported heavy fuel oil to power its grid. This has created a perfect storm of problems that has held the nation hostage. First, there's the incredible cost. Electricity prices in Guyana are among the highest in Latin America, sometimes hitting 32 cents per kilowatt hour, more than double the regional average. Can you imagine your own electricity bill suddenly doubling or even tripling? For Guyanese families and businesses, that's the daily reality. This suffocates economic growth, making it nearly impossible for industries to compete and for small businesses just to keep the lights on. Then there's the reliability, or lack of it. The country's power grid is old, inefficient, and notoriously unstable. Rolling blackouts aren't an emergency. They're a common frustration that disrupts daily life and brings business to a halt. It's estimated that the state-owned utility, Guyana Power & Light, loses over a quarter of the power it generates simply because the transmission lines are in such bad shape. This has created a bizarre situation. Thanks to its oil boom, Guyana is now one of the world's fastest growing economies. And yet it remains a nation in a state of energy poverty. The country is rich in resources, but poor in power. The government knows that without solving this problem, all its dreams of industrialization and a modern economy will remain just that, dreams. And the pressure is on. Energy demand is exploding. In 2023, peak demand was 182 megawatts. Just two years later, in September 2025, it's projected to have shattered that record, reaching over 221 megawatts. Some experts predict demand could surge to nearly 300 megawatts by 2026. The country is in a desperate race against time to find a source of power that is abundant, affordable, and reliable. And that desperation led them back to a grand and deeply troubled idea. The proposed answer to Guyana's energy nightmare has a name, the Amela Falls Hydropower Project. First identified as a prime spot back in 1976, this project has been a shimmering mirage on Guyana's horizon for decades. A symbol of a clean energy future that has always been just out of reach. The vision is as grand as the jungle it would seek to tame. The plan involves building a 165 megawatt hydroelectric plant where the Amila and Curibrong rivers meet, deep in the Amazon. It's designed as a run of river plant, which is meant to be less disruptive than traditional dams because it relies more on the river's natural flow and needs a smaller reservoir. The plan calls for a reservoir of about 23 square kilometers, which sounds big, but is actually modest for a project of this scale. 
From this remote jungle powerhouse, about 270 kilometers of high voltage transmission lines would be built to connect to the national grid on the coast, where most people live. The plant is designed to be a workhorse, generating over 1,000 gigawatt hours of electricity a year, enough to cover a huge chunk of the country's soaring demand. The promises tied to this project are transformative. The main goal is to finally break free from the expensive, polluting heavy fuel oil that has held the economy back for so long. Proponents claim it will provide a stable, 24-7 source of baseload power, the kind of constant, steady electricity that a modern economy needs to function, and something that intermittent sources like solar and wind can't provide on their own. But the most tempting promise is the price. The government has aggressively pushed the idea that Amela Falls will slash electricity costs for consumers by half. The project's developers would sell power to the grid at a target rate of around 7.7 .7 cents per kilowatt hour, a fraction of what people are paying now. That single change could put hundreds of millions of dollars back into the pockets of Guyanese families and businesses, potentially unleashing a wave of economic growth. Amela Falls is also the centerpiece of Guyana's low-carbon development strategy. It's a plan to use its new oil wealth to fund a green transition. In theory, it would let the nation increase its energy supply fivefold while keeping carbon emissions flat. It's an ambitious bid to become a very rare thing, an oil superpower that's also a green energy leader. For its supporters, Amela Falls isn't just a power plant. It's the engine of a new Guyana, cleaner, richer, and finally in control of its own destiny. But for every grand vision, there are powerful risks. The path for the Amela Falls project hasn't been one of smooth progress. It's been one of relentless conflict, delays, and controversy. For over a decade, the project has been bogged down in a swamp of political warfare, financial uncertainty, and environmental alarms. The political saga alone is a drama of power and paralysis. The project was first seriously pursued in the early 2010s, with financing in place and an international developer, Scythe Global, ready to build. But in 2013, the plan smashed into Guyana's fractured political landscape. The ruling party at the time didn't have a full majority in parliament, and the opposition refused to give the unanimous political support that Scythe Global demanded as a condition to invest. Without that consensus, the developer walked away and the project collapsed. When the opposition coalition took power in 2015, they officially shelved the project and commissioned a new review. Ironically, that review, done by Norwegian consultants in 2016, concluded that Amaela Falls was still the best path forward for Guyana. Despite this, the new government didn't move ahead. The project lay dormant, a casualty of political gridlock. Since regaining power in 2020, the original backers have been on a mission to resurrect it, but the political war rages on. Debates in parliament have turned into bitter clashes, with each side accusing the other of sabotaging the nation's progress. Then there is the billion dollar price tag. For a small nation like Guyana, this is a monumental investment. The original financing model fell apart with the political consensus. The current government has tried to revive it under a new Build Own Operate Transfer, or BOOT model, where a private company funds and runs the plant for a set period before handing it over to the state. That has proven incredibly difficult. A deal with China Railway First Group stalled in 2021 after the company couldn't secure financing on the government's terms. This has led to years of delays, pushing the potential completion date from 2027 to 2029, and now likely even further. Critics warn the financial risks are just too high and that the project could plunge Guyana into unsustainable debt if anything goes wrong. Finally, there is the unavoidable conflict with nature. Building a dam and hundreds of kilometers of transmission lines through one of the most biodiverse regions on Earth has real environmental costs. Construction will slice through pristine ecosystems and flood around 23 square kilometers of rainforest. But perhaps the biggest threat is climate change itself. Hydropower relies on a steady flow of water. In an era of increasing climate volatility, what happens if a severe drought hits? Suddenly, your billion-dollar solution is just a concrete wall in a dry riverbed, and Guyana is once again left in the dark. The fight over Amela Falls is a battle between two completely different stories. Depending on who you ask, the project is either Guyana's salvation or its ruin. On one side are the project's staunch defenders, led by the current PPPC government and Vice President Bharat Jagdeo. 
For them, Amayela Falls is the absolute cornerstone of a modern, industrialized Guyana. They argue that anyone opposing the project is holding the country back. Their position is clear. Guyana cannot reach its potential while it's chained to unreliable and dirty fossil fuels. They see hydropower as the only viable option for providing the 24-7 baseload power needed for heavy industry. In their view, solar and wind are valuable, and they're investing in them. But those alone can't power the country's ambitious growth. They point to the promise of cutting electricity prices in half as a game changer for every citizen. To them, the decade of delays caused by political opposition is a national tragedy, a self-inflicted wound that has cost the country dearly. On the other side are the project's fierce critics, primarily from the APNU plus AFC political opposition. Their story is one of caution and deep skepticism. They paint a picture of a government rushing into a high-risk venture without doing its homework. Former Minister David Patterson has been a vocal opponent, arguing the project was flawed from the start. Opponents repeatedly raise red flags about the billion-dollar price tag, warning it could be a massive debt trap. They argue that the promise of cheap electricity isn't guaranteed and question the dam's technical viability, suggesting the water flow data is outdated. They propose a different path, a more decentralized grid with a heavier focus on solar farms and smaller, less risky hydro projects, like the ones at Kumu and Mokomoko, which they claim to have championed. To them, they aren't saboteurs. They're the ones who protected Guyana from a fiscal disaster. These two sides are locked in a political war, and their mutual distrust has created a decade of paralysis, leaving the nation's green dream hanging in the balance. After years in limbo, the Amela Falls project has reached another critical moment. With the government now holding a strong majority, the political will to push the project forward is greater than it has been in a decade. But the path forward is anything but clear. The latest attempt to find a developer fell apart in 2022. Since then, the government has gone back to the market, talking to companies from Brazil to South Korea, but progress has been slow. As of early 2025, the government has acknowledged the process is stalled and is preparing to seek bids yet again. Because of this, the timeline has slipped. The original goal of having the dam running by 2027 has been pushed to at least 2029, and even that seems optimistic. In a major policy shift, the government is now prioritizing a new gas-to-energy project to meet immediate demand. This plan involves piping natural gas from offshore oil fields to a new 300-megawatt power plant. Amela Falls is now spoken of as a project for the future, something to be pursued after the gas plant is online. This raises a serious question. Is the gas project just a bridge to hydropower, or is it becoming the permanent alternative? The government insists that hydro remains essential to its long-term plan for a mix of gas, hydro, and solar. Vice President Jagdeo has reaffirmed that hydro has to be part of our ongoing plan. Still, the uncertainty is palpable. All the old permits and studies for Amila have expired, meaning much of the prep work has to start from scratch. The political opposition is as dug in as ever, and the huge challenge of financing a billion-dollar jungle project hasn't gone away. The project has a second chance, fueled by oil money and political will, but it's also facing a new rival in natural gas, while being haunted by the same old demons of political division and financial risk. The story of Amila Falls is about more than a dam, it's about a nation at a crossroads, grappling with its future. Guyana has been catapulted from obscurity to wealth, yet now faces the challenge of building a modern, sustainable nation. The project embodies a bold green vision, promising energy independence, affordable power, and an industrialized future powered by renewable energy. But it also serves as a cautionary tale. Political infighting and the risks of mega projects have stalled this dream for over a decade cycling between hope and disappointment. With oil wealth fueling ambition, Guyana stands between immense opportunity and serious risk. The nation must decide, will Amela Falls drive a prosperous green future or become a monument to an idea lost to controversy and politics? What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below.